Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the home edition of Truth Wanted. I am your host, Objectively Dan, and joining me from the state of Idaho, Unholy Sarah is online with me. Hello, Sarah. How's it going? Hi. Good. How are you? Doing all right. Uh, folks, the ACA is currently closed to the public, so our hardworking volunteers that have been working a lot of hours figured out this home solution. And that's what we're doing right now. So I am recording this from my apartment. I got my microphone in front of me. Uh, and we're just going to keep doing the show as far as we uh, can keep doing it. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be like this probably for the next couple of weeks. So just kind of expect it to be like this. But we're going to keep going. So anyway, if this is your first time joining the show, this is a show where we talk to people about what they believe and why. I know Matt Dillahunty is actually... Uh, live streaming this, I think, on his Twitch or somewhere. I don't know. So in case you guys are watching for the first time, welcome. Uh, this is a show, again, where you can call in and talk to us about whatever you want. If you want, Look, if you want to talk to us about if you think the coronavirus is a hoax, I mean, I'll disagree with you, but I'll talk to you about it. Um, alien abductions, religious beliefs, whatever. Uh, one thing I need to make clear at the top of the show is the number that's on the screen is actually... The regular number that we use but we're using a different system tonight so uh if you're watching this live somebody can post that in the chat um and and i'll have the uh number up for you shortly here uh, but there is going to be a different number so again if you're watching this hopefully somebody can post it it's on my twitter and i'll have it pulled up to read off to you in just a second but regardless uh once i get that figured out i, I first want to introduce unholy sarah sarah has been making YouTube for uh, making YouTube videos for a little bit now. And she's got some really interesting stuff. Sarah, what do you do on YouTube? And uh, yeah, tell us about your channel. Hi, um, I do uh, some stuff about like religion and part aspects of religious, aspects of religion that I see as harmful. Some things are a little bit more about politics or social issues. I talk about just whatever I think is important to me at the time. Um, but that's like the bulk of what I talk about. Yeah. And uh, I've seen some of your stuff. I think you're a really awesome voice on the platform and stuff. I'm really glad you're putting stuff out there um, for people to see. Okay. So uh, hopefully you guys should go check out our channel when we're done uh, with this conversation here. So first thing I got to ask you, uh, how have you been dealing with the virus? Because we've all got our own little coping mechanisms, right? I feel lucky to have a lot to do still. Uh, I, I'm in school and school just switched to online, obviously, and it's mm -hmm. been an adjustment, but I'm glad that I have stuff to focus on so I don't have to focus on how crazy everything is because like I already deal with enough anxiety without this. So I'm just yeah. glad I have school to focus on. So I'll tell you this. So I, some of you guys know, I lost my job in December and I started working again in February and the job that I do right now, without saying too much, is I, I do, uh, in part, I deliver goods to places. And so every day, I've been going to grocery stores, I've been going to convenience stores, and I've just been seeing the foods kind of come and go on the shelves, which is really interesting. And the really interesting thing is, I hear so many people talk about the virus, like everybody's talking about it all the time. And I start to hear people's kind of ideas about it. So I heard the story about how some author wrote a story where a, a virus came out of China a few years ago and people were talking about that. Uh, I've heard that the coronavirus is a bioweapon uh, from China. I've heard that the virus was designed by the Democratic Party to make tr Trump look bad. Like I I've heard everything you could possibly think of. And it's all garbage. It's all really bad. But, um, you know, people are relying on what they can get as far as information goes, they're just looking at Facebook and stuff and they're not really checking the facts. Although I do think more people are probably looking at the news now more than ever. So maybe, you know, that's a plus, but yeah, it's, it's kind of been strange, but I don't want to talk. I mean, if somebody calls and wants to talk about it, I will talk about it. I don't plan on talking about it myself for the next few weeks. Cause it's like, I don't know. I hear everybody talking about it all the time. That's kind of a bummer, you know? So uh, yeah, if you have your thoughts on it or you want to share your experiences, go ahead and, and feel free to call in. And that number uh, is on the lower third now. It's 512-991-9242. Uh, so 
Uh, if you want to call, please go ahead and call that line. Again, we're using a different system tonight, so we're going to see how it goes. But, yeah, thanks for joining us for this special home edition of Truth Wanted. It's kind of like a fireside chat almost, except I have an apartment. I don't have, like, a fireplace, but uh, that'd be cool. Maybe next time we do it, I can get, like, a background, a little fire. Um, so, anyway, Sarah, you're on YouTube. You're doing stuff. Uh, what's going on? What's been on your channel lately? Um, well, last week was, what was my last video? I have a terrible memory. Um, <laughs> but it's been, um, recently I talked about a video Paul and Morgan had put out and talk, that went into a two part. It was the first time I talked about Paul and Morgan, um, and about the issues with, um, how religion tends to slut shame people and shame people into this nice little neat bubble of sexuality because that's something that bothers me a lot. Um, this upcoming week, I'm torn between a couple of topics. But yeah. Yeah, got a lot of different projects and stuff. I get it. I hope people have more time. I, I'm, I don't know because I don't make a living off of YouTube. You know, I do this, uh, I'm a volunteer with the ACA. This is all uh, a, pretty much a volunteer effort. Uh, and so I wonder what YouTubers who do this full time, and I, and I know some, I, I should be asking them, but like how, I wonder if that revenue has changed at all as far as like, are people leaving on Patreon? Are people watching more videos because they have more time? I don't know. It's going to be interesting to look at the aftermath of all of this. Um, I, I did see somebody on Patreon talking about um, not charging for the month because um, they know everyone's like dealing with, or a lot of people are dealing with losing their jobs. And by the way, since my memory went totally blank and mm -hmm. that is because of nerves, I apologize for that. I just went and looked. It was the idea that there's no hope in atheism that I talked about last week. I also recently talked about uh, suicide prevention awareness, which I think is a very important topic, especially yes. right now. With oh my gosh. Being inside. Yes, especially right now. I mean, it's just so important to have a support system, have someone you can mm -hmm. talk to. And hey, if you want to talk to us, like we're totally cool with that. Lines are open. Uh, and uh, yeah, like definitely, if not us, right, probably not us as a support system, because we'll just talk to you for like, you know, whatever the duration of the show is, and then we got to go. But like, you know, it's good to figure out who's out there checking in on people, seeing if they're okay. Because mm -hmm. for me right now, um, I'm just I've been at going to work and going home and just going to bed. Like there's just not much else to do and it sucks. It really does suck. But, uh, that's just the world that we live in now. It's going to be strange when we get out of this. I wonder, will people learn from this experience? Like what are people going to get out of it? My hope is that people will become more kind and empathetic to each other. And my hope also is that people will trust the expertise of people who have been studying these kinds of things for years more so than, you know, maybe traditional medicines, but I don't know. That's not really based on any hard data. That's just a hope that I have. What do you think, Sarah, that some of the changes might be when we get out of this? I don't know. I keep hearing people talk about how things aren't going to just go back to normal. Mm. And that actually, that scares me a little bit just because, you know, fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. but, um, I do kind of hope some things will change for the better. Um, right now I've seen, especially on like local stuff online, people just helping each other out a lot, um, helping each other find stuff because the grocery stores are insane right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that we can maintain that sense of community. I don't know if it's been like that in other places or if it's just because the town I live in isn't like exactly a big city, but um, I hope we can maintain that, that sort of sense of helping each other as just a human race. Yeah, I hope so too. Oh, by the way, I did joke on Twitter uh, that this is a Tiger King fan cast and I kind of want to make that the reality. If you want to call and talk about Tiger King, that's cool too. Um, but yeah, that show, that show will keep your mind off of things going on because there's a lot of crazy things going on in that show that uh, definitely cannot completely summarize in <laughs> an introduction here but uh yeah just trying to find new stuff it's like man i have the internet and 
do you feel this too? It's like, I, I feel like there's nothing to watch, even though it, that's stupid because there's totally tons of things to watch. But I also, at the same time, I feel guilty about watching because I feel like, oh, I have this time now to like improve myself. Like I should be reading more books or something else. I did start reading a book on my Kindle the other day and I want to finish that, but I don't know. It's, it's like I need a project or something outside of the show, obviously, because uh, yeah, might might drive me crazy. Yeah, and I, I think part of feeling like there's nothing to watch when there's a ton to watch is just finding something that properly occupies your mind when there's um, so much that wants to be running through it. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, don't feel too guilty about not doing other things because it's a crazy time to be in and you can't push yourself to do what a time. What you can do. Yeah, yeah. definitely a, a crazy, crazy time. Um, but I'm glad that I keep... Uh, get to keep doing this show and I'm glad you're here and I'm glad everybody else out there uh, watching this is here too. Uh, so I have a couple calls here, so I'm ready to get started. If you're ready to get started here, Sarah. Yeah. All right, cool. Oh, and also I got to say uh, using this different setup is funny because it's like, it's uh, clicking on hyperlinks and stuff. It's not using the same physical, but so it's like, if I ever want to drop a call, it's not the same visceral feeling of smashing a button. I have to like double click on a hyperlink and that's just that's just not great so just smash on your mouse yeah because i i drop so many calls on this show